please be seated. I'd like to ask everyone to please silence your cell phones. Welcome to University College's 68th Convocation and Commencement Celebration. I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands we now stand. I am Interim Dean Mike Frasiello. We are happy that you have joined us this evening. I invite our class marshal to present our college banner. College Marshal Kofi Karakari will proudly carry the banner for University College during this Sunday's commencement. Each Syracuse University school or college will present its banner at the dome, which signifies the cohesiveness of one university. While the flag is presented, the following history and mission will be shared with the audience. University College, established in 1918, provides access for a diverse population of part-time students seeking a Syracuse degree. University College is also the home of the Bachelor of Professional Studies degree. Kofi is receiving a BPS degree in Knowledge Management. Kofi, please come forward to receive a stole of our gratitude. I would like to invite Reverend Jerry Waterman to offer invocation. Father Waterman. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you for this time of graduation. Your spirit of wisdom has empowered the hard work and the discipline of these graduates in such a way that their hunger for learning has been sustained with knowledge, discovery, creativity, and determination. As they prepare to receive their diplomas, let them walk in prayerful gratitude for the many blessings that have made this moment palpable and filled with great potential. In a spirit of gratitude, we pray for their families, friends, loved ones, and the many who have supported them as they worked hard to realize this expectant moment. In a spirit of gratitude, we pray for the professors, mentors, and administrators who have challenged, cared, and crafted them along this academic journey. In a spirit of gratitude, we pray for their fellow students, who have taught them about friendship, collaboration, and sharing. Lord, even if the, as they have faced and met many challenges along the way, they know that their lives transition into a new chapter where there will be more challenges to face in order to accomplish great things. May your grace shield their anxieties and fears so that they may stay encouraged about the future. Give them patience and hope to make proper use of their gifts. Give them courage to face the challenges of being in a society where they will live in peace, service, and gratitude. Give them strength to resist the temptations of greed, laziness, pride, and envy as they strive to do and be their best. May your spirit guide them as they unfold the next chapters of their lives. Help them to enliven hope in the world and bring good things to your kingdom. And may this celebration be a reflection of the blessings that they find in knowing and loving you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. Thank you, Father Waterman. <clears throat> we gather this evening to honor the candidates of Syracuse University's class of 2017 who have completed their degrees part-time. We have students graduating from seven schools and colleges within Syracuse University, representing 33 majors. 
The graduates wear a tassel that represents their school or college. University College's tassel is royal blue, signifying loyalty, trust, and integrity. This evening, we are going to recognize eight of you for your academic achievements by naming you prestigious scholars. We will present awards to those who ex excelled in their majors, a diverse group of achievers primed for success following graduation. We will recognize our Inclusive U students who are earning a non-credit certificate as part of a unique partnership with the School of Education. We will hear from our student speaker and we will honor our university friends, our staff, faculty, and donors who have helped us accomplish our mission. Let me introduce our distinguished guests. Joining me on stage from your left to right, and please stand and remain standing during your introductions. Our college marshal, Kofi Karikari. Our guest speaker, Eric Newcomb. Reverend Jerry Waterman. Tonight's speaker, Timothy Bryant. Vice Chancellor and Provost of Syracuse University, Dr. Michelle Wheatley. Academic Director of the Bachelor of Professional Studies Program and Senior Associate Dean in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, Dr. Arthur Jensen. Assistant Dean of Student Services, Rosemary Kelly. And Interim Associate Dean of Academic Affairs and Online Programs, Dr. Karen Bull. Thank you. We are also very pleased to welcome Dr. Michael J. Excuse me, Dr. J. Michael Haney, Vice Chancellor for Strategic Initiatives and Innovation. Thank you for joining us, sir. Also here with us this evening is B. Gonzalez, Syracuse University Vice President for Community Engagement, former Dean of University College, advisor, advocate, mentor, colleague, and friend. B. Many of the graduates we recognize here this evening and the countless UC graduates who preceded them over the past 33 years were propelled to the finish line by your advocacy and personal commitment to helping them realize the dream of earning a Syracuse University degree. On behalf of our graduates, students, staff, and faculty, I personally thank you for all you have done and will continue to do for University College. Please accept this token of our appreciation. tears? No tears. I promised I'd give Rosemary a dollar if I made her cry. <laughs> Every time. Graduates, many of you have benefited from the generosity of our donors who are committed to supporting and preserving our history and tradition. By funding a variety of scholarships and children's support grants, our donors have helped make it possible for you to reach your goal of a college degree. We recognize our donors for their generosity. The accomplishments you celebrate today should be shared with those who have supported you along the way, family, friends, employers, all those who are important to you and cheered you on. Let us take a moment to thank them as well. I'd also like to acknowledge my colleagues who, as a team, strive to provide success and support to our students. Members of the faculty and staff, please stand and be recognized. It indeed takes a whole university to make events such as this one a success. We also want to recognize the staff of Hendricks Chapel and Campus Catering, through their hard work, they've made it a very special week on campus for all of us, so thank you as well. Finally, I want to extend a special greeting to our graduates who will view a delayed broadcast on the web. <laughs> Congratulations to you as well. Graduates, you have achieved a milestone that many aspire to a Syracuse University degree. Somewhere between your very first class and this moment, you earned the right to be given the magical formula hidden in the folds of the regalia you wear today. To save you time for searching, I'll share that formula with you now. 
It's all about props. <sighs> a boy gives a cookie to a mouse. The mouse asks for a glass of milk. He then requests a straw to drink the milk, a mirror to avoid a milk mustache, nail scissors to trim his hair in the mirror, a broom to sweep up his hair trimmings. Next, he wants to take a nap, have a story read to him, draw a picture, and hang the drawing on the refrigerator. Looking at the refrigerator makes him thirsty, so the mouse asks for a glass of milk. The circle is complete when the mouse asks the boy for a cookie to go with his milk. It's one of my favorite stories, by the way. <laughs> that, graduates, is the secret formula. It is a formula you followed each time you mastered a new equation, researched and analyzed an unknown topic, critically argued a controversial position, or solved a multivariate problem. And then scaffold that knowledge into your next class, innovated and problem solved at work, and engaged your peers and community in thoughtful and productive discourse. It is the secret formula you enacted each time you figured out a daycare schedule, scrambled to find a reasonably close parking space to campus, wrestled with the FAFSA form, and stayed up late exhausted after dinner, bath time, and bedtime stories to finish a paper or read 40 pages in two texts. It is, of course, the secret formula of lifelong learning, a secret formula you now embody for your children, family, colleagues, and friends. It is a secret formula that carries a responsibility to take the knowledge, skill, and experience you have attained at this magnificent university out into your life's work and citizenship. The Syracuse University motto emblazoned on your mantle of your gown, translated from Latin, reads, knowledge crowns those who seek her. Will you have sought knowledge and she has crowned you? Crowned you with a magical little cookie. As you write the next chapter of your journey, please continue to relish in the rewards of being the mouse and the boy. For the graduate who stops seeking and sharing knowledge leads a bland, cookie-free life indeed. Thank you. I promised my wife I wouldn't forget that. So. Our guest speaker this evening is a graduate of the David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Tim Bryant began his undergraduate studies at University College through the Arthur O. Eve Higher Education Program. As a part-time student who had completed a GED high school equivalency prior to his admission, he was able to fulfill his childhood aspirations of attending college. Despite the challenges of work and family responsibilities, Tim excelled in the academic environment at Syracuse University and earned a Bachelor's of Science in Public Health with summa cum laude honors in December of 2015. In May of 2016, Fall College presented Tim with the Scholar Award for Academic Excellence, Exceptional Campus and Community Engagement, and Personal Integrity. And in August of 2016, Tim was accepted and is currently pursuing his PhD in sociology at Syracuse University. <laughs> Tim's journey is one of tenacity, strength, and determination. His success resulted him in receiving both the regional and national Outstanding Professional Continuing Education Student Award from the University of Professional and Continuing Education Association. We are honored, I am personally honored tonight uh, that Tim had accepted our invitation to speak this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Timothy Bryant. Good evening, everyone. So my name is Tim Bryant, and I'm honored to be here as University College alum among so many distinguished members of the Syracuse University community. Provost Wheatley, Vice Chancellor Haney, former UC Dean and now Vice President of Community Engagement, B. Gonzalez, Interim Dean Mike Fraciello, <laughs> as well as our wonderful UC staff, donors, and our families and friends. And of course, our graduates. Congratulations to each of you 
for a job well done. This is a very special day and I'm honored to share it with you. It wasn't that long ago that I sat where you are and I know firsthand what many of you are feeling at this moment. Certainly a sense of accomplishment, but what I remember thinking then was, after graduation weekend, I'm going home, lock the door, I'm gonna turn off all my electronic devices, I'm gonna climb into bed and sleep for about a month. <laughs> It'll take some time for this moment to sink in and to adjust to life as a graduate. School has been such a huge part of your life for the past few years, and suddenly here you are, closing this chapter to your personal story. I don't know each of you personally, but I have no doubt yours is an exceptional story. I know that for some of you, this path hasn't been the easiest. Maybe you had to stop and restart your studies, maybe multiple times. I know that for some of you, the amount and time of energy you invested in your studies tested your relationships. Perhaps friends grew distant, or kids didn't always understand why mom or dad didn't have as much time to spend doing fun things. I also know some of you faced doubts about ever reaching this point. I know, I've been there. I share many of your experiences. As non-traditional students, our challenges are unique, and so are our stories. Too often those stories get lost in the mix of the mainstream, but they are too important to be left untold. My story is one I was ashamed to tell for many years. I was ashamed I was different, that my life was anything but traditional. I grew up in a not so nice part of Jersey City, New Jersey. We didn't have many resources, including green spaces to play. My friends and I used to walk about two miles to get to a park that had grass and trees and a playground that wasn't strewn with broken glass and garbage. One day when I was nine, I was abducted and assaulted by a stranger in that park. Back then, intervention for dealing with acute trauma was virtually non-existent. So I did what most kids would do, could do. I pushed those feelings deep inside and I carried on. Then, at the age of 14, I was randomly attacked by, and beaten by six men not much older than I was. As a re result of those compounding of traumatic experiences, I developed severe PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. It left me unable to function. I, <clears throat> I was forced to drop out of school in the middle of the 10th grade. My PTSD was so intense, I didn't leave my house for two years. Eventually, I got help, and I obtained my GED. Over the next 15 years or so, I managed to carve out a decent life. I had several meaningful jobs, including a career as a licensed massage therapist. In that capacity, I focused on working with individuals with grief and trauma issues, people like myself. 12 years ago, as a single person, I adopted my son, who was 14 at the time. This is the most meaningful job I will ever have. My life was good, but something was missing. Something was always missing something that I thought would always be missing. As a child, I had always dreamed about going to college, but the opportunity was lost and I thought that dream slipped away. Then one day, not long after I became a dad, I had a client who happened to be a professor here at Syracuse University. Sandy Lane said in passing, if you know of anyone who's never been to college and would like the opportunity, I know of a program at University College that will offer financial and other support. I assumed she met someone recently out of high school and she assumed I had already been to college. I told her my story anyway, and she sprang into action. She became my advocate, my mentor, and as fate would have it, she became my advisor in my undergraduate program. Now returning to school wasn't the easiest transition for me. Not only did I have to learn or relearn many of the basics, I had to overcome my fears and lack of self-confidence. Thankfully, like you, I had all the amazing people at University College to support me every step of the way. Thank you for all that you've done for me, for our graduates today, and for the countless other students you've helped realize their potential. In large part to you and others who have supported me along the way, my college experiences have far exceeded anything I thought was obtainable. As an undergraduate, I got to study abroad in six different countries in Europe and Africa. I was able to take the skills I learned in the classroom and apply them to projects in the community. This included developing, included developing a smoking cessation program with three other students 
for which we were awarded the prestigious Chancellor's Award for Public and Community Service. I also was able to conduct a, re conduct a research project that examined trauma due to gun violence in Syracuse University, or, sorry, in the city of Syracuse. The results of that study were recently published and the article is now being used for teaching in an upstate hospital course for medical students. And here I am, just completing my first year as a PhD student in sociology here at Syracuse University. So I tell my story, all of it, the good and the not so good. And I encourage you, encourage you to do the same. Doing so validates our humanness. It connects us to each other because each of us has a story that needs to be told. And if I could just go off script for just a minute. So this morning I went and got a haircut because I figured I needed to look okay for this moment. And my barber came in and he seemed really rushed and flustered. And he started to tell me that he was dealing with, with anxiety and in the past he dealt with PTSD. I was like, huh. So I told him my story and he told me his story and he told me that he also dropped out of high school he told me he also dreamt about going to college. And I told him, I know of a program. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important to tell our stories. So our stories, it can serve as inspirations to others, certainly. But it can also inspire us to keep moving forward, to meet new challenges. What you've been able to achieve, graduates, is amazing. Take the time to celebrate this moment. Soak it in. Spend time with friends and family. Recharge your batteries so you can get yourself ready to begin the next chapter of your story. Whatever the next step is for you, fully embrace it. In all likelihood, you will face new challenges, new obstacles. You may have to stop and restart or take a different path, perhaps multiple times. Your relationships might be tested again and you may feel like quitting. When those moments arise, look back to this moment to this chapter of your life, and remember your story. Remember what you did to reach this goal. What would you do differently? What would you do the same? How a story begins can set us up to write great endings. Now it's up to you. How will you write your next chapter? How will you live your life? Let it be a story you take pride in. Let yours be a story everyone will want to hear. I can assure you, Yours is a story I want to hear. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Tim, for reminding us why we do what we do each day. Good evening. My name is Karen Bull. The next part of our program highlights awards given to our friends and partners who believe in and support part-time education and lifelong learning. I ask Dean Fraschiello and Provost Wheatley to proceed to the lower stage. Our first award this evening is the Staff Service Award, which recognizes a Syracuse University unit that has contributed to university college's success. The service award goes to the Office of Human Resources in recognition of its assistance with the staffing challenges we faced last year. Your professionalism, understanding of our needs, and willingness to help are why we are better positioned to serve our students and carry out the mission of the university. Receiving the award on behalf of the unit is Chief Human Resource Officer Andy Gordon. We extend our thanks to the entire department. Andy, will you please come forward?
Excellence for Online Teaching Award goes to Elizabeth Weimer, who has been teaching in the Bachelor's of Professional Studies program since fall of 2015. Elizabeth is committed to high academic standards and works to ensure our part-time students have the same experience as their full-time counterparts. One student sent us an email that said, I am in class with Professor Weimer right now, and she is truthfully the best professor I've had at SU so far. I would love to continue my education with her next semester. We are most pleased to recognize Elizabeth for her dedication. Please join me in congratulating Elizabeth Weimer. <laughs> the Nancy C. Gelling Award is named for a former director of academic advising at University College. This honor recognizes the graduate with the highest overall grade point average for a first bachelor's degree. It goes to Jason Stewart, who completed a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering and computer science with a GPA of 4.0. Jason couldn't be here this evening, however, we extend our congratulations on this outstanding achievement. I invite Dr. Arthur Jensing to present the next award. Thank you, Karen. These next awards are given to students who have achieved academic distinction in their home school or college. The Sylvia Wyckoff Award recognizes outstanding achievement in the College of Visual and Performing Arts. Professor Wyckoff joined the faculty of Syracuse University School of Art in 1942 and retired in 1981. In recognition of her passion for art and to continue her legacy, we present this year's award to Bernice Sai who's graduating with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Communications Design. Bernice could not be here with us this evening, but we want to congratulate her on the award. The Hortense Cochran Award is presented to a part-time social work student in the Falk School of Sport and Human Dynamics, who demonstrates academic excellence. This year's recipient with a GPA of 3.721 is Raymond Simmons. Raymond, please come forward. And now thank you, Dean Fraschello and Provost Wheatley. And Rosemary Kelly will introduce our student speaker. I am pleased to introduce our student speaker, Eric Newcomb. Eric is graduating with a bachelor's degree in information management and technology from the School of Information Studies. Additionally, he is a certified associate in project management from the Project Management Institute. Eric entered the U.S. Navy at the age of 20, quickly learning the value of hard work. During his six years of service to the military, he worked as a missile technician on board a submarine. Like many of our students, Eric attended school part-time while working full-time. With two children under the age of four, he realized that academic success was not without cost to his family. However, he reassured them that this struggle was only for a short time. 
and that the sacrifice his family was enduring would be worth it in the end. Eric is graduating with a grade point average of 3.815. Eric is our student speaker. Please come forward to accept this stole of gratitude. Please join me in welcoming Eric Newcomb. There's things in my ear, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Eric Newcomb, and I'm honored to speak tonight as, your, as a representative of the class of 2017. On behalf of all of us, I would like to welcome our distinguished guests, dignitaries, professors, advisors, donors, staff, and a heartfelt welcome to our families and friends who celebrate with us tonight. How did I get here? When I first signed up for classes six years ago, the idea of actually graduating seems so far off and very surreal. Well, here we are, and this is real. Each of us have taken a wildly different path towards academic success, but there's a common thread that we all hold on to. Our lives are complex, we juggle more than just class and homework. And we've all come to the realization that the pursuit of higher education is something that we desire and are willing to sacrifice for, not just something that is expected of us. I attended community college in North Dallas right out of high school because that's just what you did. I performed well in the subjects that interest me and skated through the others. Honestly, I needed to do some growing up, so I took a hard look at my life and enlisted in the Navy in early 2003 as a missile technician. That's right. <laughs> I volunteered to serve onboard submarines and was stationed in the Seattle area for about five years. I spent a collective 24 months underwater and went out to sea eight times in four years. The Navy, the Navy provided me with the opportunity to mature at a very fast rate. Being 23 and in charge of a submarine, uh, an arsenal of submarine-launched nuclear weapons has that effect. The military is all about efficiency and accomplishing the mission. The primary lesson I learned was that in order to be successful, you must set clear-cut goals and find the most efficient path to, uh, to follow them. I learned to think independently and came up with out-of-the-box solutions for problems that everyone will face in their life. I always knew that finishing my education was a primary life goal, and the Navy was going to be critical to accomplishing that goal in the years to come. I met my wife while in the service, and we decided that our future was outside of the Navy. I separated from the service in early 2009 and immediately took a position with a government contractor in upstate New York, here in the Syracuse area. I maintained X-ray equipment for Homeland Security. When I accepted the job, neither me nor my wife had ever been to Syracuse. We were embarking on another adventure. After a few years on the job, I realized that if I ever wanted to advance my career, I needed a formal education to back up the excellent experience the Navy provided me. I have the type of job where you work from a home office and make your own, uh, make your own schedule. This is a massive benefit when it comes to taking classes as a non-traditional student. I enrolled in my first class at SU in 2011, scared out of my mind and completely intimidated. It was a nutrition course, nothing like jumping into a hard science after nine years of being away from a classroom. I knew there was a high probability that I would end up being one of the oldest students in the class, and in some cases, I've been older than the professors. This was initially very intimidating, but I now realize that my age, experience, and outlook on life had, uh, are significant factors that in, uh, influenced my participation in the classroom. I have the advantage of being able to answer questions from the perspective of an adult learner who can draw on any number of experiences. I learned lessons the hard way and had to overcome financial and emotional adversity. I started out by only taking one class per semester, but quickly realized that a 2027 graduation date may not be the most efficient use of my time. 2013 was a huge year for my family. In a single semester, we purchased our first home, had our first daughter, and I started taking a second class each semester. I won't lie, that was a hard semester. And I can neither confirm nor deny that I turned in a final paper with a picture of my daughter with the sole intent to elicit sympathy. <laughs> I got an A-minus overall, 
So I think it worked. <laughs> I'm really not above using my children for that sort of thing. <laughs> Spring breaks presented, I'm sorry, summer breaks presented the opportunity to get ahead of the requirements game. So summer courses just became part of my routine. Semesters came and went. I picked up classes at the times that worked for my family and work schedule. Everyone here knows the meaning of sacrifice when it comes to taking online and evening courses. Time in the classroom means time away from friends, family, and work. Being a part-time student has other costs as well. For myself, it manifested in not being able to participate in many of the activities that my iSchool colleagues take advantage of. I would love to have been able to take trips to Silicon Valley to meet with technology leading lights, trips to New York City to meet and network with SU alumni who could advance my career after graduation, or the many trips abroad to Asia and Europe. Balance has always been the watchword around our home. Maintaining it is easier said than done. Work-life balance, school-life balance, school-family balance, everything in between. Somehow all of it worked out, and that's why I'm standing here today. Achieving academic equilibrium is of course the goal, but in my experience, it never happens. Everything has a cost. Let's just call it the Robin Hood effect for tonight. You have to take from somewhere and give it to someone else. More often than not, it involved taking time away from my wife and kids and giving it to group project members or evening classes. If going back to school part-time as an adult cost us so much family time and capital, why did we do it? I did it because I wanted to set a positive and lasting example for my kids. I did it because I hate stagnation and I always want to be moving forward in life. I did it because I already invested my blood, sweat, time, tears, and everything else in between in the service for the right to attend college and secure a future for my family. My reasons are specific to my family and life as I see it. I'm willing to bet that your reasons are not too far off. Career advancement, the betterment of kids and loved ones, personal drive, and a vision for the future are all worthy and admirable reasons to complete an education. I would urge every graduate here to continue learning in whatever way is appropriate or feasible for you. Investing in education at any level will always pay dividends. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank those who have supported, encouraged, and enabled me to be here today. The University College staff, Emmeline Butler and Keith Doss specifically. Keith, thank you, for, thank you for helping me navigate the nightmare that is the VA's bureaucratic paperwork system. Emmeline, from day one when my wife and I met in your office to discuss my academic future here at SU, you've gone above and beyond for me and I'm forever grateful. You were always available when I had a question about credits or just to bounce ideas off of. Thank you. To my dad and mom, Mark and Christy. The example you set for us of personal responsibility, shared sacrifice, and a tenacity for education has served me well. I can think of no better example to follow. Thank you, and I love you for your support and encouragement. Finally, none of this could have happened for me if it wasn't for my wife, Abby. She's about to cry. <laughs> She's always pushed me to aim high and to be the absolute best at whatever task I take on. She has sacrificed her time, sanity, and educational goals so I can pursue mine. She was there for me when my class and work schedule became overwhelming. She's one hell of a sounding board when I just need to vent. She instantly transformed into the full-time caregiver for our kids when I had an important project to finish. She worked just as hard as I did for this degree. Thank you, Abby, I love you. The Marines famously have a motto, Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. The Coast Guard has Semper Paratus, always ready. The unofficial motto of the submarine community is Semper Gumby, always flexible. <laughs> My family has adopted this motto for our own and it's helped us through these past few years. Congratulations to all graduates this evening. Never stop learning. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Will Dean Frasiello and Provost Wheatley proceed to the lower stage? We will now recognize our alumni scholars. 
Each of these students have excelled academically while juggling countless other responsibilities. These bachelor's degree candidates earned a minimum grade point average of 3.721. Scholars, your presence in our classrooms enriched this institution, and you have distinguished yourselves among many capable and committed students. When I call your name, please come forward to receive a memento. Dean Frasiello will present the awards to our alumni scholars, and Provost Wheatley will acknowledge their accomplishments. The class of 2017 alumni scholars are Janet Hyde, Eric Newcomb. <laughs> Elaine Sartwell. Jared Shepard. Rebecca Sealing. Raymond Simmons. We also recognize Jason Stewart and Jeremy Mortis, who could not be here this evening. Congratulations. <laughs> now it's time to recognize each of our graduates for their achievements. I ask you to please bring the name cards that you received when you came in and begin to assemble in the back of the chapel. My colleagues will direct you to line up and as a memento, you will receive the official Syracuse University pin. As students gather in the back, I would like to bring your attention to the notations listed in the program for many of our graduates who have received special honors. Our alumni scholars have received a gold honor cord, and our Alpha Sigma Lambda students are wearing a gold and maroon cord. Our student veterans who are graduating this weekend 
have been presented with red, white, and blue honor cords to thank them for their service and acknowledge this milestone. All of our students deserve our praise. Will the audience please stand? I ask the graduates to come forward and be recognized. Dean Frasiello will present the pins and Provost Wheatley will offer her congratulations. Keith Stahl, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Ray Simmons, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Susan M. Smith, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. <laughs> Colin Burns, Non-Credit Certificate, University College. Rebecca Sealing, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Megan Muscatello, Non-Credit Certificate, University College. Kristen Penfield, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Elaine Sartwell, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Habib El Amir, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Jared Gray Shepherd, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences.
Tanisha J. Woodall, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk College of Sport and Human Dynamics. <laughs> Janet M. Hyde, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Susan C. Blanca, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Karima Monica Akins, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Tiffany D. Jones, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Amanda Teachout, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Ahmed A. Abdi, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Daniel Rausch, Bachelor of Science, College of Engineering and Computer Science. Takla Simon Winston, Bachelor of Science, College of Engineering and Computer Science. <laughs> Elizabeth A. Scott, Non-Credit Certificate, University College. Christy Lynn Carta, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Claire Sheila Luby, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. Eric Newcomb, Bachelor of Science, School of Information Studies. Kofi Kari Kari, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. <laughs> that concludes the presentation of the class of 2017, but let's give them all another round of applause. Thank you, Provost Sweetley and Dean Frasiello. Mike? Thank you, Rose. I'm gonna go off script here too. We got a couple of Air Force guys in the room and we don't have really cool things like, what was that Gumby thing? <laughs> right? We never had really cool stuff like that. <sighs> On behalf of Chancellor Severud, tonight's distinguished guests, the University College staff, my colleagues, and Syracuse University faculty, I sincerely congratulate the class of 2017 on the completion of your college degree. Let's give him one more hand. We hope, graduates, that your connection to us continues well beyond this evening as proud alumna. After the ceremony, please join us all for a reception in your honor, being held in the quad, on the quad in tent A, Staff members will guide you there. Please stand, we're standing, sorry, <laughs> for the benediction and remain standing as we sing our alma mater and uh, until the dais party exits the stage, Megan Field, a music 
education major in the College of Visual and Performing Arts and the School of Education will lead us. Dr. Ann Laver, an assistant professor in the School of Music, will accompany Ann. The lyrics can be found on page eight of your program. Father Watermill. To our graduates, may God's blessing follow you as you find new journeys to travel. May you walk safely along the path of your dreams. May God's gentle hand guide the decisions you make and the passions that you follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect his love and truth. And may hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day. Now go forth in peace. Amen. <laughs>